Ducks Unlimited Television is presented by Drake Waterfowl Systems, innovators in waterfowl hunting. Hello and welcome to the first episode in another memorable season of Ducks Unlimited TV. I'm Ashley Ward. In this installment of America's favorite waterfowl series, Doug Larson joins a group of conservation entrepreneurs in Minnesota for their season opener. We'll also learn how DU's Living Lakes Initiative is conserving valuable habitat in this part of the country. You're about to meet a few true champions of habitat conservation and public land access in Minnesota. We'll also introduce you to our new co-host. Kara Harper hunts Arkansas with members of Memphis Ducks Unlimited Varsity Chapters, all next on DUTV. By way of introduction, I've enjoyed a long relationship with Ducks Unlimited and as long as I can remember. I've read the magazines time and time again and I've been fortunate enough to write for the magazine on a regular basis now and it's one of the jobs that I cherish. I was really enthused when I heard from DU. They said, we'd like you to go to Fairmont, Minnesota to meet this dynamic group of volunteers. I was so excited because I literally cut my teeth duck hunting not 20 miles down the road from this part of the world and shot my first duck literally 15 or 20 miles away. Unfortunately, over the years, it has actually changed a great deal. And Minnesota has lost a lot of its original wetlands. And some people say it's in the mid 90%, 95, 97% of the original wetlands. And it's amazing to think when you see this landscape that a century ago, you could take a canoe almost anywhere across the state and that's not remotely possible now. But to come down here and be with the Eisminger family and this group and to see what they are doing in wetlands restoration is an amazing thing. And I was so excited to come down and hunt with them, especially hunt with them on opening day. We're ready. <laughs> oh yeah. While we wanted to get this scheduled for opening day to be with these folks on the opening of duck season here in Minnesota, unfortunately we had some really unseasonably warm weather. The weathermen were calling for highs in the high 80s and not much in the way of wind and anybody who's duck hunted any length of time knows that that can be a real challenge even if you have local ducks on the landscape as these guys did. Teal to the left. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Up Ready? Front. Up front. Go. In the years that I've been duck hunting, I sometimes think that one of the absolute axioms of waterfowling is that wood ducks don't decoy, number one, and wood ducks don't fly during the day, number two. To your right, get ready. At 9 a.m. in bright sunshine, along comes two wood ducks. I'd say go. Came right in and decoyed like they were mallards. Well, that wasn't that too was bad, a guys. little better. Kind of distinguished ourselves a little better on that <laughs> bunch. Good work, fellas. Maybe Minnesota should have stuck with the nine o'clock opener. <laughs> it's amazing what you guys have done in Martin County um, by restoring and preserving the wetlands that you have. There's so much drainage that's been done over the years in Martin County. They say 98, 99 percent of our wetlands are drained, and it's just this is just a perfect example of when you pull the tile and. Put the water back and you don't even have to put the water back do you basically you pull the tile and the water comes back where it belongs Is absolutely yep. yeah exactly yep. you know we need to partner with the egg community because without egg in south southwestern minnesota there's not a lot of industry and agriculture is very important so it's a hand-in-hand -hand process Ducks Unlimited Television is presented by Drake Waterfowl Systems, innovators in waterfowl hunting. Mossy Oak Shadow Grass Blades, the official camo of Ducks Unlimited and Ducks Unlimited's Rescue Our Wetlands campaign. 
banding together for waterfowl. And as we all know, opening day is a combination of Christmas and unwrapping gifts and a whole season beginning, the unofficial kickoff of the fall. Almost everywhere there's a duck opener, almost everywhere there's an opening day, there's a picnic or there's a barbecue. And those are the kinds of things that people remember. They continue the traditions, makes them think about the duck season, makes them think about DU projects, makes them think about the work that they want to do. Certainly one thing that became clear in my time here was this family, the Eisenberger family, Doug Hartke and folks that surround them. They've already got plans in place to pass this tradition and pass this work ethic along to the next generations of their families. At our picnic on Saturday night here, we had four generations of waterfowl hunters yeah, it was nice bringing my six-year-old son out here for a fourth generation. As soon as we brought the ducks back, he'd hold them and check them all out. He was loving it. This group with Fox Lake Conservation and a group called Sheik have been a group of individuals that got together and decided that it was high time that all this degradation and tiling and draining of wetlands had to stop. They started with one small wetland, Back about 20 years ago, we had a piece lined up they wanted to add to Karen Wildlife Management Area, which is just across the road. And we had a decent price, I thought, in agreement. And the board wanted to know for sure we could get our money back through the DNR. I couldn't guarantee it, so they denied doing it. That's when my dad, my father-in-law, Doug Hartke, and my high school friend that hunts with us, we went together and we threw the money and we bought the farm. And it's an absolutely amazing success story that you know, we can, we can hunt over a piece of water that was once a bean field, and it wasn't very good farmland in any case. So it belongs as wetland, but it belongs to have water back on it, which is, it's a terrific story. It's not just the seven of us. It's, yes, by Fox Lake not doing Sheik One, we started Sheik, okay? But most of us Sheik members are very active in the fundraising of the local DU chapter. And with all the work that Ducks Unlimited has done, it has made my Minnesota 138 chapter uh, an elite presidential chapter of six, the last six years. We've raised between seventy-five and one hundred and five thousand dollars annually, and it's because of the work being done in our backyard. Overall, we're trying to protect some land for our kids to hunt on, but actually just grow it for the public and try and get more kids involved in hunting and and, and grow the sport because we do need help doing that. The rolling prairie landscape of southwest Minnesota and northern Iowa was once dotted by thousands of small lakes and potholes. The wetland habitats that remain here provide critical staging and foraging areas that waterfowl depend on during spring and fall migration. They also serve as important habitat for waterfowl that breed and nest in the region. Because of its importance to waterfowl, Ducks Unlimited calls this area the Living Lakes. But the Living Lakes region is in a habitat crisis. More than 90% of the region's prey potholes have been lost due to drainage and conversion, and more than 90% of its prairies have been plowed under or paved over. These cumulative impacts have resulted in a significant decline in breeding and migrating waterfowl numbers in both states. To address this crisis, Ducks Unlimited and its partners are focused on restoring, enhancing, and protecting the wetland complexes that remain. As always, our members and volunteers will be a key to accomplishing our conservation goals. To find out more about DU's Living Lakes Initiative and how you can help, visit ducks.org. DU Insights is brought to you by Mossy Oak Properties. Find your favorite place at mossyoakproperties.com. DU TV is powered by Black Cloud Ammunition. Drop ducks like rain. Mossy Oak Properties, America's land specialist. Purina Pro Plan, nutrition that performs. And Mossy Oak Bottomland, the official timber pattern of Ducks Unlimited. I was excited to be back in Southwest Minnesota. I've been gone for a long, long time, but I, I grew up and hunted in Minnesota and it's really neat to be back and you know, see some of these marshes, especially these classic cattail marshes that they have in this part of the country. It's, it's wonderful to be back home as it were.
Our second day, we were greeted again by light winds and pretty balmy temperatures. We went to what I would consider the classic southwestern Minnesota cattail marsh, a place called Kittleson Slough. And the first thing I noticed putting out decoys was this is an unbelievable spot. A clear water marsh where you could look in and see the coontail and basically see duck food in clear water. And that's always a great sign. Right at first light, we started to hear Canada's honking. Oh yeah, geese coming right over us. Ooh. We picked them up about six or 700 yards away and it took a long time for them to come. And you know how you are sometimes, you're sure that those geese are gonna slide off, but they kept coming right at us. Let's go fellas. Good shot, buddy. That I was awesome, him. Wyatt. I got it landed one. right in front of Let's go. Well, good morning. Yeah. I was impressed with that black cloud three inch trees. Those were close, but. One of the fellas, Adam, that was with us had his boy Wyatt, and suddenly he broke out with a smile and he looked at me and he said, I got one. Way to go, man. Awesome. First goose? This is pretty cool. <laughs> That's great. It was especially cool. Dad didn't shoot, so he can't even claim part of it, right? Yeah. Uh, excellent. And for him to get his first one, that's just, that's just so cool. And we could have packed up and left, and that would have made the morning. That was the absolute pinnacle. And uh, I'm sure why it's still smiling at school this morning. Right here. Up, up front. Up front. Somebody go. I like your new black cloud. <laughs> That second morning, we had a little younger crowd, I should say, in the blind. It was Josh Eismanger, who's a third generation in this conservation group, made one of the greatest left to right crossing shots on a blueing teal. It's neat to see what's, what's coming. These guys are, are taking on their roles as stewards of the land. In my opinion, and for local opportunity, the DU's Living Lakes Initiative is the greatest thing that DU's done around here for opportunity-wise. What's so appealing to you about the project? What has it done that's really benefited you as a hunter? I've seen, I've seen lakes that have been pretty much dead, where it's, you know, turbid water, and their, their whole spiel that they preach on it, and then they, they redo them, and that water in the fall is crystal clear, and you got vegetation that's thick. You see the birds use it like crazy. One thing I learned on this trip, and one thing that I would like to pass along is, guys like Tim and Doug in this part of the world illustrate how much we can all do if we take a little time. We can not only preserve wetlands, you can restore wetlands. You can take a cornfield and turn it into an amazing wetland in a very short period of time. Think about in what ways that you can contribute, whether it's financially with time, become a DU volunteer, become more active in your local chapter and do what you can to help put more ducks in the sky for us all tomorrow. For a moment, let's consider what to do with a sporting dog off season. Really, we need to keep them conditioned year round. But what about shed hunting, antler hunting? That's a great little sport, especially in the springtime. Right after hunting season, you can take to the fields and find antlers most anywhere in the country. We begin this little training process by using a rubber shed. This way, if the pup grabs it to make the retrieve, he's not going to get stuck or hurt with the tines. We're going to go to the smooth shank then because there's nothing to stick the dog like this would be. Imagine running with this and it pokes him in the eye. He's not going to pick another one up. Go to the smooth shank. You will need a whole shed to do this. You want the base of the shed where most of the scent is contained and then basically it's a retrieving game. Then we move to a real shed. To begin with, I like to turn the shed over like this. The points are down so the dog can learn to grab it in a proper position. Later, they'll gently learn to take the shed in their mouth and run with it, being very careful not to get poked or stuck with these sheds. They can scent in parts per billion they can find this if you've acclimated the dog to different size and ages of sheds. She's hunting, makes the pick, returns, and when she makes the pick or returns, it's a big reward, it's a big party. Now she thinks this is fun, and what a great way to keep her enthusiastic off season. This dog will be ready to take to the fields this fall. Duck Dog with Mike Stewart is presented by Purina Pro Plan, nutrition that performs. DUTV is brought to you by Native Nurseries, hand selected, hand grown plants for wildlife. Higdon Outdoors, quality, customer service, innovation. That's Higdon. Biologic, scientifically proven wildlife products. 
Intelligent firearm storage made by Securit provides closed captioning for DUTV. The gun storage game will never be the same. If you don't take care of your choke tube, you might be making an expensive mistake. And if you get a tube stuck in your gun, or rusted in maybe, it can cost a couple hundred dollars for a gunsmith to get it out. It might not come out and it, you might lose the tube in the process too. A little preventive maintenance can keep that from happening. At the end of the season or certainly any time your gun gets really wet, you want to take the tube out, clean the threads out, grease it again, put it back in. Just use a bronze brush like this to scrub the old grease out of the threads here. Scrub the threads inside the gun as well. And then the important thing is to use grease, not oil. Oil can migrate and seep out of the threads. Grease your tube up, tighten it up so it's snug. Check it every once in a while on the field. Take it out and clean it when it gets wet or at the end of the season, and you'll never have any trouble with it. Duck Gun is presented by Black Cloud Ammunition. Drop ducks like rain. <laughs> So growing up in my family, we go from one season to the next. And even though I was a girl, I fell right in line with that. I wanted to be just like my older brother. I never wanted to be left out. And my mom always encouraged my dad to take me. And that has paid just dividends on our relationship. I am so close with my dad and my brother, and that is honestly because of hunting. Hunting in the Arkansas timber is home to me. It's where I grew up. It's where I learned how to duck hunt. You know, it's where I learned how to duck call. And there's just something really special about it. You know, when you think of duck hunting, you think Arkansas timber. And so finally, I was probably around eight or nine years old, and it was finally my time to shine. I was able to go duck hunting, and they actually floated me across the hole on top of the decoy bag because there wasn't any waders that were my size and the water was too deep. And I got to sit on the dog stand, and I got to hunt with all the guys. That was something that was really special to me because I've always been included. Having the opportunity to be a co-host for Ducks Unlimited TV was a dream come true. I've been involved with Ducks Unlimited since college, and it's something that I've always known about, but it wasn't until college that I really actively started engaging with it and being a part of our collegiate chapter. And this is a really special hunt for us because we're hunting with two Ducks Unlimited varsity chapter members. In high school, you know, I had heard about Ducks Unlimited, but it wasn't something I knew that I could be involved in at the time. But it's neat now to see that, you know, you can start these kids off from, they have the Green Wing program, and now high school, the varsity, and then Ducks Unlimited Collegiate, and just on and on. It's awesome to see how you can grow Ducks Unlimited. That drink fell hey, pretty quick. Hey, that's great, isn't it? You got some green head. Good shot. Good shoot. There we go. Is that the first green head of the trip? That is. It's the first real green head. <laughs> Something that I kind of graduated into once I got into high school and into college was calling. Calling was kind of a struggle for me at first. I was very intimidated by it because everyone that we hunted with was so good and they could be loud and they had enough air. And I was this young, small girl and I couldn't get this call to sound right and I was nervous. <coughs> oh my. And finally, after I broke past that barrier, and I was able to say, you know what? I'm gonna do this. I want to learn how to call. I'm not gonna be scared anymore. I stepped up and I got over that hump of just being scared to break the silence or scared to mess up. And that's when I really was able to start calling and start being able to learn more and more about it and go from just a quack to, you know, an actual make a cadence. And so whenever I was younger, whenever I was in high school, I know how school lunches go. <laughs> I was very, very shy. Mm. That was a good call. Oh yeah, solid trade. I don't think I would have been able to go out and speak to people like Wyatt and ONR and to really just go out to get sponsorships and donations and speaking to people that are you know years older than them and feeling confident in it and feeling confident in themselves. One, two. And I think the Ducks Unlimited Varsity program has really, really helped them with that. 
because you can just tell speaking to them that you know they are very very dedicated to this whole process and they want to do you know of course what's best for the ducks but this is going to benefit them later on in life and this is just going to be something that they can carry with them and then build on and they're that much more ahead of the game. More than 80 years ago, Ducks Unlimited was built on a foundation of volunteers working hard for wetlands and waterfowl. Today that tradition continues in Minnesota and across the continent. Special thanks to Tim Eisenmanger and Doug Harkey for their hard work on behalf of Ducks Unlimited, DUTV and waterfowlers everywhere. That's all our time for now. Thanks for watching. Visit us at ducks.org and see you soon on DUTV.